Video design Brad Smith, uh, Bartlett Tree, Kevin McGrath, Balada Landscape, Frank Balada, and Kisser Knapp, Renee West, and Lucas Irrigation, Mark Lucas. So they helped out above and beyond getting this. And these things don't get caught, they don't get pulled together with just one person. So I have this wonderful host committee, 10 great ladies who helped me out. We're here. So when you hear your name, can you raise your hand, please? Emery Agner, who's not here, she's doing a radio show. Uh, Megan Burke, Sarah Crowley, my sister Patty Campanella Daniels, <laughs> Rima Klusman, Jamie Mannion, Sandy Misakian, Karen Viger Stack, Shauna Oliveri, and Renee West. So thank you all for all of your help. And there are four great ladies from Baby's Breath who really pitched in. Uh, Tanya Reutemann and Marianne Christensen for working above and beyond the call of duty. And board members, Emery Rafferty DiPiero and Michelle Curry. They're all here. So thank you all. And now I'd like to introduce Baby's Breath founder and chairperson, Dr. Teresa Rafferty. For the past, bring the clap button. <laughs> For the past 30 years, Teresa has been working with families on multiple levels, with parents, children, and babies, in and around what is commonly referred to as the system. She's worked from the bottom up, in the home, in the courts, advocating for kids, runaways, and delinquents. And she was trained as DSS caseworkers, as well as chaired the sociology department at Anna Maria College. Teresa's doctoral thesis was titled, Whose Children Are These?, which was a result of extensive research which focused on the grave issues of attachment disorder. Her doctoral work, in turn, paved the way for a novel concept of what has now become a reality, the baby's breath home. I've watched from the sidelines as Teresa has forged ahead making baby's breath come to being. Your wisdom, your patience, and tenacity has been an inspiration. And I'm proud to say that I'm fortunate enough to be calling her my friend. So, thank you. Thank you. You know when you're about nine years old and you're on this Christmas pageant and you look out at the audience and you start crying and run away? <laughs> <laughs> I won't do that. <laughs> I want to talk about Baby's Breath and how it happened. How did Baby's Breath come into being? And, and several people here tonight have said that to me. So I'm going to take you back on a little journey. I won't take too long, but just bear with me. I have worked with babies, with toddlers, for many years. In and out of foster care, abusive homes, and trained caseworkers. In the 1980s, I was in New Bedford and I was going to do a training for child abuse and neglect for case workers. So I had four or five cases where the babies were three years old. And I was going through the files, and you know when you get into something like cleaning out a drawer and you just can't stop? Well, I couldn't stop reading the files. And as I'm reading the files, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, these kids were taken out of the home at six months old, at eight months old, in a year old, and none of them were ever returned to a home. They still live in foster care. In my training, I thought, that's awful. And I knew it anyway. I had been in the system for 30 years. I finished, I went, I opened a private practice, 
and I was all tucked into my little private practice, seeing people. It was wonderful. And then I started to get an influx of DSS workers. They're coming to meet the therapy. I can't take the system. I can't believe what it's doing to the baby. I can't believe there's no home. Something has to change. And I would listen to them, but this time it was different. Because I would go in the house, and I had just had a baby. And I'd pick up my baby, and I would rock her, and I would feed her, and I would just think about it. Do you know the flashbacks? The flashbacks started coming of all those babies, all those little toddlers that I had seen. And here I am with my baby tucking her in. And you couldn't escape it, because every time I heard a story in my practice, I got to look at that little red-headed girl, you'll see her in the flip over, and I say, what happened to those babies? A friend of mine is an orthopedic surgeon. He talked to me one day and he said, you know, I saw two twins today, they're 18 months old. You know, you tow in, kids tow in, they walk pigeon-toed like this. He said, they came in for a tow in and I saw a bruise on one of the ribs of the baby. And I did, I said to the nurse, I want full skeletal x-rays of both of these twins. She said, what? He said, just do it. And sure enough, there were multiple crashes on those babies. Well, that was a amazing. I had an 18 month old. I said, something's got to stop. It's got to change. We got to make a change. When I was doing my PhD, I interviewed Judge Leary, who sat on the bench at juvenile court forever. And he said to me in an interview, when my people go out to get that 13-year-old and get that 14-year-old, you know what I say to them? Go in the back room. Get the kid in the crib, because that's the one you got to save. That baby in the crib is where your impact is going to be. I never forgot those words, ever. In 1999, I sent out letters to the community, to social workers, DAs, lawyers, teachers. And I sent out all these letters, and I, you know, it was a short letter. Didn't send in my dissertation. I, I got back. I know they wanted to read it, but I, I saved it. I said, no, I'll just send them a letter. So I sent them the letter, and I said, come. Come join a group and let's talk about creating a change. Let's talk about creating a change. So I was serving hummus. And I'm in the kitchen, the kids running around, the husband's there, and I'm serving hummus and I did the panic. What if nobody comes? What if nobody comes? What if nobody comes? No one's going to come. Sure enough, people started coming. And they came, and they came, and they came. And I call it the night of hummus and horror stories, because <laughs> that's what it was. And everybody there had a story about a baby, about a toddler. And I said, we can do this. At the time, it was called the Transitional Home. That was the first board of directors. We named it Baby's Breath. I'll spare you the other names, but Baby's Breath was the name of the Okay? Because they're pretty funny. But Baby's Breath fit. So I went to a fundraiser similar to this that my brother had, Attorney Rafferty. And at that time, Governor Salucci was there. And being the sister that I am, I brought a little envelope, and maybe you're not supposed to do that, but I did it. And I walked over and said to him, I got something I think you need to read. Cash. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happened to me a couple days later. So he said, give it to me. I said, no, I'm not going to give it to you because you're going to lose it. Who can take it that will give it to you later and you'll read it? So he, he, we gave it. And Richard Rafferty called me up and he said, okay, what did you do? Did you hand the governor an envelope? I said, no. I handed his body an envelope. He said, really, what was in it? Beat the poor? I said, no, save the babies. <laughs> so, he sent me a letter. And he said, there's a meeting at DSS in Boston for you to go. So I'm all excited. I'm like, good, we're in. This is done. <laughs> we're all set. You be. I went in, sat with the people at DSS, and they said, there is no problem. I said, what do you mean there is no problem? Look at research. There is no problem. 
we don't have any babies in care. This is 1999. And the polite woman I am, I said, would you just do me a favor and run the numbers for today and tell me if you have any numbers for today? 297 babies that day were in care. 297 babies. And that was the beginning of the beginning. So I'll move it forward. Nine years later, many meetings later, a lot of hard work later, we have a home. DSS has contracted with us. They like the idea now. <laughs> the babies need a consistent environment to grow up, to be healthy people. They also gave us money in the contract to run the home. So, I want everybody to do me a favor for a minute. You people go on vacation? This is a crowd that goes on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you all. I know you go on vacation. All right? So imagine you're on vacation. All right? You know how much fun it is to be on vacation? And you're out to eat, and you just don't have to answer the phone, and you get to get along with your partner, and everybody's having fun, right? And then you come home, and you go, oh, it is so good to be home. You get in bed, and you snuggle in, and the house smells good, and you know where your stuff is, and everybody snuggles in. And it feels good to be home, doesn't it? Everybody agree? Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. These babies <laughs> never go home. They never go home, ever. This is their home. This is the beginning of a home for them. And from here, they will go home. They will go home. They will not go back to foster care. They'll go home. These babies will have a home when they leave here. So I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank Kathy. And thank you.